everyone in principal's class it's miss j i wanted to go over what we did in class today thursday the fourth um it's just a quick reminder of what we went over <clears throat> we looked at force vectors and we're going to just apply some basic um trigonometry to these so when we here's your title force vectors when we get into a vector we're looking at quantities what's going on with a vector what is it it has two things going on it has a magnitude or how much and a direction which way is it going what force is being applied somewhere um, some examples of this are position force and moment meaning that each of these items has two things going on and we'll look at those when we get into actually looking at the physical objects we'll see that they all have both magnitude and direction and that's what makes them a vector how we do the notation engineering notation uh, but this is just general we give them a variable so a or b we say hey here's an arrow indicating a force is happening on some object some rigid body sturdy object and we're going to give it a, a letter you can call it whatever um, but we're going to use A or B here for this presentation. And we put an arrow on top when we're doing it by hand, which we will be in class. And the arrow indicates, doesn't matter, it always goes this way. You don't, you don't change it based on, basically, on what you're doing. But an arrow means, hey, there's a vector. So you think in your mind that it's not just how long it is, but it's also which way it's going. It's got a second part to it. So that's how you would write it, A an arrow or B with an arrow. Okay, so how we illustrate them. As engineers, we've got to notate and show what we're thinking and what our plan is. Sorry for the background noise. So how we do this, we want to show magnitude, how much direction, what is happening uh, in between, and then sense up and to the right or which way it's going. <laughs> and we'll look at that. So the magnitude for this vector here, the vector is not named, it's an arrow. An arrow indicates that there's more than one thing happening. If we break it with these hash marks into three segments, we have one, two, three, indicating that the magnitude is three. Notice we weren't paying attention to units. It didn't say feet or inches. Um, it doesn't matter. We're just showing that it has a magnitude of three. It will matter later. So that's magnitude. If you need to take notes, feel free to pause and then come back in. The next thing we're going to look at on the same vector is the direction. So the direction gives you, you, you find your vector, you find the nearest reference angle, you choose one, there's only one shown here, and we'll look at the angle in between it. So the angle here is 30 degrees. And we see that our vector is not going along the x-axis, but it's moved up, right? So it's going up this way, that angle in between, it went up this way. And it is going in a counterclockwise motion, meaning that if it were starting from here, it's going to go counterclockwise. If it kept moving, it's going to go around this way. We know this because it's above the axis. So it's coming up this way, it's going counterclockwise. So if you're asked on a test, what's the direction of this vector, your response would be 30 degrees counterclockwise, CCW. And we'll do a lot more examples until it becomes um, very easy to do. 30 degrees counterclockwise. They've added on this information from the positive x-axis, not usually something you need to answer, but understand. Here's positive x because it's going to the right. Well, not on my video, <laughs> but on your screen, I'm backwards. Okay, so let's look at sense. Sense is something that you're not going to see on an end of course exam. Hey, what's the sense of this vector? But something you should have an understanding of because when we start doing other objects, there'll be something happening after, after this vector. So you get past this vector and then something else is happening. Get past that, something else. So the sense says it's indicated by the tip of the arrow. In this case, your vector is going up, so it's going up along this y-axis, and it's going to the right. So if you had a quadrant here, which is not showing, you'll see it on the next slide, you say this vector is going up and to the right, trending upward and to the right. That's sense. 
And that's how you would say it, up, up and to the right. This slide you don't need to copy down. I'm going to share it with you separately so you have it. Um, just a good visual for you. You have your axis here. You've got a Y axis going up and down. You have an X axis going right and left. And you know this because you see the origin here, 0, 0. From here you can say, well, the, the X axis is positive in the right direction, negative in the left direction. Same for the Y. Positive in the up direction, negative in the down direction. The red arrows, arrows are our vectors. So this is the same one we saw on the last slide. See that? Yeah. <laughs> Wrong way. This way? This way. Stupid recording. <laughs> this one says that it is going up. So it's, it's trending upwards and it's going to the right. So it's up along the y-axis and it's going to the right along the positive axis. <coughs> this one says it is going down. It's pointing down and it's pointing to the right. So negative in the y direction, positive in the x direction. On this arrow over here, we're going down and to the left. So negative, negative. Negative on the y-axis, negative on the x-axis. Should make you nice and pointy. And then our last one here goes negative in the x direction and positive in the y direction. So I would say this arrow is up and to the left. Now let's look at some trig review. Hopefully you have seen this in your math classes um, and this is just a review to bring it back up in your brains for a little bit. Um, when you get deep into engineering, they have software that does this all for you. You just need to understand it in the field. So we have here a right triangle. We know it's a right triangle because it, we've got 90 degrees in, in the corner down here. You know that if you knew the um, angle here and the angle here, if you added them together with 90, it has to equal 180. And that's because if you open up that triangle and laid it flat, totally, completely flat, you broke it open and you laid it flat, it would be 180 or a straight line. And that's what we're looking for with our bridges so that they don't collapse. They can be sturdy and take all that force. Um, Pythagorean theorem is generally a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Logically, the way it got fancy and wrote it this way, it's just addition. No problems. We'll work through a couple of those to jog your memory. Okay, so when you're looking at engineering, you're going to have some triangles that you see in um, bridges. We use the triangles because they're sturdy. You can stack them, you can go wide, they're nice and sturdy. They take a lot of force that's moving. So trucks running across the bridge, you know how they first get on that bridge and their weight, because the bridge moves a little bit, their weight goes down. Sometimes you feel it on a large bridge. We need that. The triangles help keep it together. So the longest length here is the hypotenuse. You have to be able to find that and identify it. And then we look at the angle of theta. So the angle between our vector, and that's going to come up in another slide. We take a look at it here, and we go straight across. We see the opposite, across from the angle, opposite. And then we look at the, the side that's right next to it, and we call it adjacent. So you're finding that, that space like we did in the beginning in between your vector and, and your reference axis. That's theta, opposite, and adjacent. So you need to be able to identify all of those. For trig functions, we use this device that lets us remember how to do this. So this is just a naming device, mnemonic device, that lets us do um, SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H-C-A-H, T-O-H. So for sine, it's S-I-N-E. We say S-I-N, but we don't say sin. We say sine. When we're trying to find the sine, and there's more math in here, you'll learn that in your math class, why we use sine. When we're trying to find sine of the angle theta, they're talking about this angle right here. Theta means that we're going to have a degree in there when we have an example. We don't have it now because we're just doing theory. So the sine of theta, to find that, you use opposite divided by hypotenuse. So you find theta, go all the way across, that's opposite, and then you divide that, whatever that length is there, by the length here, the hypotenuse. Now in engineering, we can do a force here. We can do weight here. It doesn't have to be length. So it depends what we're looking for, and we'll see that later. So to remember that, we say 
SOH. Sine is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. Sine is equal to opposite by hypotenuse. So you don't have to memorize the whole thing. So Gatoa. And the same way that works, cosine, C-O-S-I-N-E, cosine, we write it like this, cosine of the angle theta is equal to the adjacent, the one right next to it, divided by the hypotenuse. So C-A-H, cosine is equal to adjacent, divided by hypotenuse. When we do those, you're going to see on the next slide, they help us find what we're missing. They help us find what's going on with our opposite side and our adjacent side. And with that, we're able to figure out the tangent. And the tangent gives us some good information that we need when we're looking at engineering courses. But that's another lesson for another day. So for tangent, TOA, it is opposite divided by adjacent. So you come here, find the same data. It's always the same angle we're working on. Look at the opposite. Look at the adjacent, TOA. And that's just a friendly reminder. This is a good slide to put in your notes, this part right here. I'm going to pause and go back. Okay, the hypotenuse. When we're applying this to a vector and we're starting to lean towards some rigid body fixtures in engineering, um, the hypotenuse gives us the magnitude of the force. So how much force is happening on an object? In this figure, we have the adjacent side, so that's one right next to theta. That gives us our x-axis component, or the force that's happening along that axis. Same thing for the, the opposite side, find theta, go across, opposite side. Well, this tells us how much of that force is happening along the y-axis. Now, there's nothing happening here. That's why they have these dotted lines. The force vector is here, but while that happens, it can be divided in here, like it gives us the force along the x and the force along the y, and those forces are important for the entire structure. So hypotenuse is the force, adjacent side is the force happening on the x, and the opposite side is the force happening along the y component. Now let's see how this helps us. So if we go back to Sokotoa that we just learned a minute ago, sine, cosine, and tangent, we can apply that to our vector. So same picture, we're looking at our vector from the beginning, the very first slide. It's going up to the right. We don't know the direction here. We do know that it's counterclockwise because it's coming up from the X, right? We do know it's up and to the right. We don't know the magnitude other than magnitude is F. They didn't tell us. We don't know theta other than it's theta. So no problems. We have sine. So we look in here, that's the space in the direction in between the vector and, and the x-axis. And we're going to look at, it's equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So we're looking here to remember, oops, opposite divided by hypotenuse. So find theta. Opposite, that's f sub y. That's a force happening on the y-axis that goes right here. And then it said hypotenuse, and that's just the force of the vector. That's the magnitude of the vector. So we're not looking at direction right now, just the magnitude. So we have um, Fy divided by F. If you were to move this around, so take this equation, so SOH, sine is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. If you solved it for this right here, the opposite side, that can help you figure out down here when you need it for tangent. So we just leave it right here. And since it's divided by the force, we just want to evenly distribute that to both sides. So we multiply it by itself, it cancels out, and we move it to the other side. And you end up with this. And that's just basic algebra. So don't be scared because it's trig, it's just algebra. Uh, so we just have the opposite side is now equal to the force times the sine of theta. So this force times the sine of theta is equal to the opposite side. Same thing for cosine. For cosine, it says to do the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So we find theta. Here's adjacent, f sub x, we put that right here. And then hypotenuse, f, the magnitude. And just like we did for sine, 
If we want to separate this by itself, we can say f of x is equal to the force times the cosine of angle theta. Works out fairly nicely. Then it gives you your fy and your fx, and you can throw them in here. Very easily find out your tangent of theta. So we like that. All right, thanks for watching. Tomorrow we will work on this. Click the bell ring. I got to go. Have a great day.